Now, when you observe something, that's about looking carefully. And the reason we've got these objects is for you to record what you're seeing. Sometimes if you draw from imagination, you don't need to record what you're seeing. You're working in a completely different way. If you're a primary teacher who doesn't feel confident about teaching art, what can you do? Kender Primary School has asked secondary art teacher Ben Naylor, who's been judged outstanding by Ofsted, to help them develop successful primary art lessons. I think if you're a really art phobic person, realise it's about the pupils' creativity. The pupils have a thirst for this. It's natural, I think, for pupils to make art and respond to real things. Think of it as inquiry, uh, inquiry into the world around them and think about how you can stimulate that with real things uh, and exciting things. And, and as long as the kids have an interest in what they're doing, they will come up with the goods. In today's lesson, I wanted to show the kids how to work from real objects, so to produce observational drawings where they'd learn to look, and also for them to begin to gain confidence in using materials, so using watercolour and paint. And as I add more water, I get a paler colour. So you need to think about size. What's another word for size? So initially I talked about the scale of the work they'd need to do, talked about looking uh, and talked about how they should draw. So for example, keeping the drawings light and simple. How thin is the end of the fish and how fat is the middle of the fish? You know, if, you, if your fish is a sort of rectangular shape, roughly, you know you've done it wrong. So you need to change it. And that's where you can start to use your rubber. And it's only by drawing that you give yourself the evidence you need to adjust your work. If you're making mistakes, you're learning. And I don't want you, because you're not confident, to not draw and not paint, because that means you're not learning. I think confidence must play a part, but um, I think what's really important and key here is the pupils that are doing the work. It is not the teacher. The teacher is facilitating the work. Um, and I think it would help teachers, for example, to pick out good examples of pupils' works and use that to model and show other kids. Over here, and someone is doing the, one of the lemons. And the edge of the lemon's really dark yellow, and the centre needs to be pale. Uh, OK, perhaps teachers aren't art specialists, but have a go, at, have a go as a teacher. If you've tackled it yourself, you'll understand what problems will arise for the kids. But you don't have to be Leonardo da Vinci to know how to mix paint or to know how to draw something. With some groups, I think it's good to model good practice. Uh, it helps a pupil very much if you draw the shape of something. You might see clearly, for example, I've saw that a prawn might look like an F or a U shape. And that just drawing that can explain it and make it clear to a pupil. This is kind of a U shape, isn't it? As long as you stick to thinking of art as a method of inquiry, you should be looking and inquiring and learning. Can you show me where the pink bit is? OK. So what would you use to make that? For the kids to look at something like that um, at first hand, they're learning about really an awful lot of things, the colour of the fish, the texture of the fish, the shape of the fish. And as well as that, they've got all the materials to learn to use as well. So there's an awful lot there. My aim was to get the pupils to reflect on their own work, reflect on the work of others, to look at the work, uh, so they can gauge their own progress and also to be to develop the skills of talking about art and perhaps to use some technical vocabulary. In some ways this is the most important bit where you actually learn to reflect and think about your own work. You look at other people's work and then see yours in relationship to it. Pick out one piece of work that you think is really good and someone else's piece of work uh, not to be critical I want you to choose something that could be improved it looks like it's kind of moving with the tail it's and right. it looks like just like a fish tail if you compare it to a, a real fish I think they sketched it carefully and they remembered to put in lots of detail and I think this part here is a bit the black has really gone 
a smudge, but I kind of like it because the shape. Well, the natural extension for this would be to look at how you can work along this theme, but using different materials. So you could extend this into clay. I've done junk modeling with fish and made bizarre, almost science fiction fish made out of junk. You could make prints from the drawings that the kids have done. You could extend that into prints. But as long as you stick to good primary sources, good objects, and then look at finding some artists who have to produce work along those lines, you can't really go wrong. So I think you've done loads and loads of learning today. You've done really, really well. There's some fantastic pictures, and you should be really proud.